Bill. What? Strange things are afoot at the Circle K. Strange things are afoot indeed. Okay, so let's just do a quick recap slash preamble here. The majority of you already know, I'm sure, about this documentary that came out late last month, March of 2018, called Convex Earth, by this group that calls itself Project Portal, this Brazilian quote-unquote research group. And a lot of people... Uh, went ahead and mirrored this video because of the first 40 minutes to an hour or, or however long they're doing all these curvature tests to test for the curvature of the earth and that was the part of the video that was done seemingly quite professionally and then it just suddenly takes this wacky left turn into supposedly being led to the discovery of a unknown continent and <laughs> so I just went ahead and mirrored a video by this red flag media guy it basically outlined all the same things that jumped out at me that were just sort of preposterous. But, uh, as people are rapidly starting to find out, this is not just some quote-unquote group of scientists down, <laughs> group of mainstream scientists down in Brazil, like a lot of people uh, assumed sort of just from the presentation of the, of the video itself. But in fact, what they are is is a UFO cult, and that's really no exaggeration, and so so after I mirrored the red flag media video, started reading things from people telling me about this Bilu character, which is this alien who Urundir, the leader of this group, this Project Portal sect or cult or whatever it is. So in the documentary, in this Convex Earth documentary, when he's talking about their 3,000 team members around the world, these are all people that are affiliated with Project Portal and this Ziggurats Technology Center, which we'll get into in a moment. So I started hearing about this guy and this all his past, and he's well known in Brazil as a sort of, you know, for, for being sort of a serial fraudster. And so, yeah, I started reading some of these things in comments and stuff, and literally no less than five minutes of Googling and looking for this uh, Urandir character. Uh, yeah, you definitely see that he's, <laughs> you know, claiming to be this special contactee with this entity or an alien named Bilu. But there's just a lot of silliness going on, a lot of faked, <laughs> faked alien encounters and fake ESP. Uh, videos and things like that. So definitely not the reliable sort of mainstream science source that people wanted to believe that we were dealing with, which hopefully should make people stop and think back to the <laughs> just even not knowing all of this information that we do now, just to watch something and see, you know, how anomalous it really is or like... <laughs> You know, it really should make you stop and think about, yeah, what's going on when you, for 40 minutes, you know, for a seasoned flat earther, right? So for all these people who kind of jumped on this for the first part, because it was so meticulously done in terms of showing, you know, which equipment they're using and how far off the ground it is, how far away is the other thing. And, you know, they wanted all this detail, what the location was and blah, blah, blah. And then suddenly <laughs> they're suddenly they're talking about discovering a, an unknown continent in the, quote, greater north past Siberia over the... I mean, it just... It was nonsense. Like, where... Did, they didn't even say, like, where they supposedly launched their probes from or what... Like, zero proof. It was just... It was just ridiculous. And so, if that had been the only part that you saw, right, if somebody just came and said, hey, check it out, these scientists in Brazil have discovered another continent and they just showed you that one segment without all the curvature testing ahead of it, you'd would not give it the time of day, right? That was the only thing that everyone got so enamored by. So the whole thing is really quite the quite the conundrum because 
I, I listened to the Globusters episode yesterday when they're just talking about the whole documentary and why, you know, there are certain points that have certain levels of validity and all that, right? And and then this morning they sort of, they found out about Bilu last night and more or less kind of on Jaronism's channel, they put up like a retraction or whatever, just like, wow. So for anyone else out there who is still mirroring this documentary, I'm imagining that most of them will, when they find out a lot of this information, will probably be taking it down. I would think that would be a reasonable thing to do. So, but the the crazy thing is, is that this whole affair just opens some rather perplexing questions, right? So after some poking around, I found this video from 2015, and it had English subtitles, which really helped because a lot of the other ones that are just in Portuguese, you don't know exactly what they're saying and stuff. So. 2015 and it's sort of it's like a 10 minute promo video for this it's basically a compound out in the jungles of brazil i were you know more like a commune really i mean it's in a lot of ways it's like your stereotypical cult community with yurts and you know so basically they call it like a tourist center like a ufo tourist center and so thousands of people come here and pay money to to stay there and they'll take like hikes up onto this hill where there's these rocks where they have these circular indents in the rocks and they claim that these are like caused by the landing pads from UFOs a long time ago. So the whole idea is that people come here and, you know, want to have a UFO encounter and then that's where you have all these <laughs> lots of allegations of fakery and, and hoaxing with like aliens in the bushes and allegations of like people who like there'll be people in the bushes throwing rocks to be like oh the aliens are doing something or using laser pens to to fake alien you know orbs or whatever so yeah there's been a lot of uh <laughs> fraudulent nonsense associated with this place but i mean there's also a lot of people who are on board and they do have this thing this so this building with all the like satellite dishes on it is the ziggurats technology center which they refer to in the documentary a number of times so whenever they say bakila researchers or ziggurats technology guys or <laughs> that that's this that's they're all associated with this uh, organization with this place and yes they probably do have people all over the world who could have participated in data gathering but who knows how much of that you know, they didn't document any of that either. So the only part that really seems like they actually did was these curvature tests. But of course, we can't really verify how long ago they did all these tests, you know, over water and everything with lasers. But presumably they really did do these tests and did build their own... La I mean, when you look at this place that they have down in Brazil, you know, they actually have their own observatory, this little mini observatory, this dome with a telescope in it so they've been doing research for however many years all this paranormal research led by this guy Ayundar or Urandir Urandir who's yeah quite the quite the character quite the fraudster but you know I, I read in a bio that supposedly he you know was was being contacted telepathically with a quote-unquote alien since he was like 12 so yeah he was, this is not a scientist, he was a bricklayer as a profession until he somehow started this whole Project Portal thing and has been, I mean, this is like, this guy's reputation goes back decades. But yeah, so in 2011, there's this video of <laughs> supposedly this alien Bilu beaking from behind the bushes and there's these little eyes or something. And it's the squeaky high, it's obviously, it's like the fakest thing ever, telling them that the world is you know, convex, that the land is convex and that the water is flat and that the earth is not a sphere, right? So the bizarre thing is, is that even if that is obviously a hoax, where did the information come from? Like if, so in 2015, in this promo video for this Ziggurats city, they also call it, the, so it's like all these yurts and houses and things, like a lot of people can stay here. But here they actually show real briefly sort of an, an early version of the same weird you know flattened asteroid looking thing and this video came out in january of 2015 so 
before the first Mark Sargent's Clues, right? But in 2011 is when they, unless yeah, somehow they managed to change the dates on the videos, which does, does not seem likely that they're that connected, but who knows. What to me is more interesting is just the whole sort of broader question that it opens up in terms of, okay, so with this guy, just because he's a, obviously a, a fraudster and a hustler, does that mean that he, there is no, you know, from a Christian point of view, we understand that anyone who's actually encountering an entity, channeling an entity, messing around with any of these occult practices and talking to something on the other side, it's not an alien, it's a demonic spirit, right? So the question is just because he's lied and, and hoaxed a bunch of different things and doing fake ESP, you know, demonstrations and stuff. To me, that doesn't necessarily mean that the guy isn't actually hearing voices or talking to to a demonic entity as well. You know, if you're being lied to and deceived and your mind is all manipulated by a lying spirit, then I mean, is it really shocking that a leader would start to just become deceitful and, and lying and have zero moral character. I mean, you're, you've you been talking to demons since you were 12. So those kind of go hand in hand, right? With a lot of, you know, not to get on a big treatise about the history of cults and cult leaders and all of that. But, you know, it does pose a real interesting uh, conundrum, right, for the quote-unquote flat earth community, which for the vast majority, you know, but prior to 2015, <laughs> it gets real sketchy in terms of like, who all really knew what, when, and who, and why, and how did this thing start? All of that sort of weird fogginess and controversy already. Now this throws an even bigger wrench in the works because 2011, and yeah, regardless of what, obviously this little thing in the bushes is not an alien, but somehow, somewhere, they started, you know, even if it was just a pure hoax, they got the info from somewhere. You know, in, in the documentary, you know, the, where they're building this model, this giant model of, like, well, there's the globe here, and then the flat, their weird flat, kind of mishmashed continents, and the extra continent, you know. They built this whole thing out of concrete and put water in it. This is uh, actually in, this too, is built in their compound, in their commune out in, in the jungle. And you can kind of verify this, because in the background you can see this, like, mesa-looking mountaintop in the background, and then that's in... It's in all the footage of the, the Ziggurats Technology Center. So this is somewhere in the compound where they built this, and it's there right now. But it poses, like, an interesting question, especially to us as Christians who are looking into this flatter topic, right? Because it begs the question, like, what, ha what if something through an occult source, an occult medium, a channeler, you know, anyone in, in whatever form or variety, right? Because you see how quickly people are how quickly people are ready to like jump on something if it seems to have promise in terms of leading people towards the, that holy grail of you know what is the what is the real map what is it what are we really on what is it really like so the idea that they had all these thousands of people all over the the world gathering data and and helping kind of solve the puzzle was that was the bait right i mean that was the that was what people were really hoping had just kind of surfaced was some you know some massive network of people doing experiments and able to share data and possibly even you know yeah every, I'm, it, when everyone saw that thing about the extra continent you're kind of rolling your eyes but you know that there's the people that who are really into admiral bird and the undiscovered land in the antarctic you know they're all lighting up over that one but yeah, zero proof or even attempt at faking proof or any scientific backing at all for those claims in the second half. And yet, you know, it was almost indistinguishable from the flying disc in space that the much hated Flat Earth Society has put out since what, the 70s or whenever that was formed or however far back it goes. Nobody would ever promote anything from the Flat Earth Society, right? But then this was like, well, maybe they're still... They haven't really thought through all the uh, conspiratorial things, and they haven't quite got to the point of faking... Sp it's like, no. <laughs> no. <laughs> These guys are not unfamiliar with conspiracy or fringiness. That's for sure. So we'll see if they actually do interview Urundir on Globusters next week. I mean, it's it's tentatively booked at this point, so we'll see. 
But that's the interesting thing, right? Is that we know as biblical flat earthers that uh, obviously Satan has, knows what the real shape of the earth is, at least a lot more than we do. You know, the fallen ones still don't know everything about creation or everything that God knows by a long shot. But when you think about psyops or you know preemptive disinfo campaigns and things like that, this is a very interesting thought experiment or whatever. Because that's the thing, right, is that something like this comes out and there's lots of reactions to it. And, and so some people are just wanting to kind of, you know, keep the good, throw out the bad and just kind of not worry about the stuff that sounds crazy. Then there's other people reacting to it and going, oh, this is obviously disinfo. Therefore, these are shills or agents or all that kind of thing. And it does it does amaze me that so many people still think in those sort of stark terms or very, especially when it comes to, you know, the idea of disinformation. The idea that anyone spreading disinformation is doing it because they're getting just, you know, paid to by the alphabet soup agencies or whatever is, that's really not how it works for the majority of disinformation. And of course, understanding the spiritual aspect to things, you know, it's hard to say what the agenda is going on with this group or the entities behind this group or who knows if he actually is contacting any entities. But personally, when I look at just situation like that regardless of the fact of that there might be blatant hoaxing going on in all sorts of ways like one of the things that people pay to do is you know they, they'll come there in a big group and then a select number will be chosen to get to go up to the hill or go up on this mountain at night and then a select group of those people will receive these like <laughs> ceramic plates that are supposedly like have engravings from the aliens on them and stuff right so lots of fake stuff going on but nevertheless, anytime you have like thousands of people coming into like an area or to a region with that expectation and that desire in mind where you know, they want to experience UFO phenomenon or contact entities. I mean, anybody who knows anything about the occult knows that like when people want to engage with the other side, you know, the devil's going to show up. So anyways, if anyone has any more specific information about... You know, this guy, or Indir, or Project Portal, or any of this that might be prevalent. Because who knows where this is going to go in terms of its ongoing association with Flat Earth. And part of me thinking about this whole situation, and then, you know, I can't help but wonder, like, what would an uh, L.A. Marzulli, or Doug Hamp, or so many of these other people who, within the sort of Christian prophecy realm... You know, trying to engage and trying to be like, hey, you should take this seriously. You know, what, what are they going to say to the realization that this UFO cult in South America was talking about Flat Earth in 2011? I mean, that's, it very well could be something that they all hear about. And that just becomes one more f crazy narrative that we have to contend with that's only muddying the waters that much more. And confusing things that much more you know so it's not difficult to see like what might be the reason for such deception and and fraudulent uh, you know research half their at least half their research being fraudulent but we don't you know how much are these guys going to be attached to the quote-unquote movement i mean we've seen how the mainstream media can just take one thing and just talk about it forever and that's you know like the rocket man Flat Earth Rocket Man crashing and it just takes over everything, or Shaq talking about Flat Earth. Something like this could easily turn into one of those as well. So there's all sorts of angles, right, that this could kind of play out or affect. So yeah, if you have any information that you think helps kind of round out the story or help shine some more light so that we can just be informed as we're moving forward and, you know, just kind of have a little bit more dis discernment in the future. So feel free to leave that uh, in the comments and thanks for watching.